I know. You want to see the stars of the show. You want to see the pigs. Look how great and f good morning, Modern Stedders. It's Friday, and Friday means Modern Stedder update. Woohoo! What a great start to the weekend. Let's check on the Icelandic chicks. They're doing awesome. They want to jump out and fly out, but they're almost all feathered out, except for the tops of their head. They're all different. I'm thinking this guy's going to be a rooster just because of the size of them compared to the other ones. But they're beautiful animals, but they're outgrowing their pen. They're outgrowing the brooder. I don't know if you just saw over there, but we got a pile of lumber. Me and Olivia, in two days, fingers crossed, on Sunday's video, we're making a chicken tractor just for them. You guys are going to want to watch Sunday's video and see the new chicken tractor we came out with. It's going to be awesome, and it's a really great price. Everything we're building it out of, you can go to Lowe's, Menards, and buy the stuff. I can make it, and you can make it. This one we're making so it's store-bought, so anybody can follow along and make it. It's gonna be awesome, and it's cheap. You're gonna love it, trust me. You ready to go out? Come on, let's go. The weather's been crazy here. Last week we were in the 90s. This week it's 40 this morning, and it's been in the 60s. It's just nuts. I got my nice winter hat on from Stormy Cromer. If you guys like it, let me know. We've been working with them, and I got the Modern Stetter 20% off Stormy Cromer and free shipping. How amazing is that? I have promo codes for that, and I'll leave them in the description down below. It's just a great American-made clothing company right here. I believe it's Michigan. They make some awesome hats, some vests. That was the vest that I usually wear. I gotta get that out. It's that time of the year. That's made by Stormy Cromer. They have some awesome flannels. They got some really cute women's hat. I can't wait to get Gina and Olivia some. They're awesome. Go check them out. I'll leave their website down below and I'll leave the promo code down below too. You want to eat some? Yep, you're on camera, Rufus. Be good. The Icelandic chickens are doing good. We're going to have to get them into New York City soon. Fall is upon us, and before we know it, winter's going to be here. We need to figure out what we're going to be doing with New York City and the chick all the different chickens in there so we can get Rufus and these two other Icelandic chickens over there. We don't want to have too many roosters. Let's go check on the fall garden and see how this is doing for us. Pluto, stay over here. It still looks pretty and purple. We have not gotten a frost yet. We've had a bunch of threats of frosts, but we have not received one yet. I hope these cabbages and broccoli can come to fruit tuition for us and we can be harvesting them later on. That would just be so nice. Look how nice they're looking. Fingers crossed. Whew, I did turn it on last night. Sometimes you wonder. We'll leave the water running while we let the chickens out. We just gotta remember to shut it off. Oh. 
I've been putting the grain on top of the apples, and they're eating a lot more of the apples now, which has been working out nicely. We want the chickens to clean the area up for us before we move New York City. We want them to be our pasture sanitization for us. We're going to be switching over most of our flock to Icelandic chickens, little at a time. So what we need to do is we need to sell some of our Bardrock chickens and Mr. Biggs. I know, but that means we can keep all the chickens and roosters that we have in New York City through the winter. They'll be able to come out in the pasture, but we can't have all these chicken tractors in the pasture because we're going to be having snow. We sold two of our laying hens. We have two males left that we're going to end up selling. We sold one Icelandic rooster because we had three other than Rufus. So now we have two of the smaller six month old roosters we're looking to sell one more of the roosters we'll keep one of the young ones and we'll keep rufus we're looking to sell 10 of the barred rocks and mr biggs and then we can keep our flock smaller we'll still have some barred rocks for laying eggs for now and then we're going to transition all the way over to icelandic chickens that's the plan I'm gonna turn it back on. And Pluto is guarding her meat birds. She likes keeping an eye on them. It's the first thing she runs off to in the morning when we come outside. Some people think these tractors look hard to move, and they can be sometimes, but it's more on the soil. Let me show you what I just pulled this tractor over. That rocks, you can't see it that well, but that's protruding out of the ground as a hump. But the chicken tractor just went up over it pretty easy. I'm happy with it. The meat birds are doing awesome. Be able to harvest these chickens in a couple of weeks or the first week in November. It all depends on what's going on with our hand, with our pig harvesting class. But the birds are all in great health. They're all beautiful and they're eating great. They love the fresh grass. We are very happy with the growth. Now, most of these are roosters. We have two well summers right there, and another one that's a hen. That buff Orphington right here, do you think that's a hen or a rooster? I'm not sure on that one yet. Getting close, see if I can show you. I'm not sure about this buff offington either. That one might be a hen too. Leave it in the comments down below. I've never had that breed before, so I'm very curious.
one of the best parts about doing the khaki camel frying pan special or any hatcheries frying pan or meat bird special you get a bunch of different heritage breeds you don't know what they are and then you don't know if you're going to get any hens out of it if they'll all be roosters and if you get hens out of it you can save them for your laying hens or you can sell them so it's pretty neat and then you can use that money to pay for the chickens or for their feed so it's a win-win all the way around you get to have fun doing it it's a good experiment and you can put a little extra cash in your pocket who can complain about that i won't you ready to go finish up the rest of the update pluto Sometimes I tell you. Oh no! What happened to all the garden plants? We harvested the garden when my mom was up. I'll put a link to that video right here. We did pretty good. We were supposed to be getting a frost all three days, but we didn't get one frost yet. I guess where we are here, we haven't gotten a frost, but other locations in this town have, and they've gotten hard frost. We just haven't, so we've been lucky. We left our onions in. We need to mulch our strawberries. But the onions are still doing good. We pulled up the corn. We made some awesome decorations with those. I'll show you them in a minute. String beans are out. Tomatoes are out. All that stuff got fed to the pigs. They loved it. Our carrots are still going strong. We left the beets in for now. One thing we did when we were pulling out of the garden is the first plant we pulled up, we took the roots out. This one we started, this tomato plant we had, no, this was a pepper plant. This pepper plant we had started in soil blocks. Can you see the soil blocks still? That's amazing. And then look at all the roots. That's just beautiful. That just, that plant just grew perfectly. We started pulling up the first ones and we went, oh yeah, we read an article and it was talking about if you cut the plants off, leave the roots and everything in your soil through the wintertime. That'll feed the microbes, the bacteria. That just gives all the soil life something to feed on throughout the winter. So we just cut off, we just cut everything off at the soil line, took that out, fed it to the animals, and then we'll keep that in and we'll feed the garden with that part. That's just awesome. Who would have thought about that? That's what we did in this garden bed and we'll see how it turns out. Let's go see the decorations. Oh, I got a cool little video this morning of Figaro. I'll put that in. You'll get a nice update on Figaro too. What are you doing, Figaro? How you doing? Our stainless steel sink. We need to organize in there and get that set up. But look at the decorations we made. These are from our corn stalks. Got some nice purple, no, it's something gem corn that we grew. That's from Baker Creek Heirloom Seeds. We got our big zucchini, some small little pumpkins. Looks festive. Did the same thing on this side. Got a little more creative with some offcuts from the off-grid outdoor kitchen the girls did a great job we got around I haven't waited but I'm gonna guess at least 10 pounds of potatoes out of the potato tower so we did good there we didn't do as good as I wanted to but a lot of that was my fault I put the wrong potatoes in a potato tower there's two different kinds there's determinate and indeterminate the ones that you want I can't remember which one now but one of them the more soil you put on it the more potatoes they'll grow that's the kind we need to plant in there next year. This year we didn't. So a learning lesson. We had awesome success. We know that we can grow potatoes this way. We just gotta grow the right kind. So we live and we learn. Next year, we're gonna do even better. Yes. The apple cider press worked awesome. Got it all. Boom, as the handle, everything just worked perfect. I was totally amazed at how much cider we actually got from the apples we pressed. I was blown away. I didn't think we were gonna get that much cider. Here's the 
outdoor kitchen. Still looking about the same. We need to get the stove hooked up next. One of the modern steaders wrote to me and sent me an email and said, I don't know if you realize, but we have that same stove and it's kind of low. Back when we were making these stoves, we were a lot shorter back in the day. He said, you might want to raise it up about six inches and ready, look. Old countertop height, new countertop height. So I'm gonna go to the hardware store tonight and see what I can get for blocks to put that up on to raise it up to be level. And then we can hook up the pipe from there to there. The Camp Chef griddle works awesome. We've done BLTs on it, we've done steak and cheese subs, you name it, we love it. Pork chops, it cooks meat awesome. It just browns it a little bit, cooks it perfectly, sears in all the juices, yep. That griddle is going to work out awesome here in the outdoor kitchen. We'll be using the griddle quite a bit. We have a local honey distributor, I guess you'd call it, in the area. And I contacted them and I got two 55 gallon drums. They're a little sticky. I got to clean them out, heat them up. We'll be using the 55 gallon drums and the pig harvesting class. Those will be the dunk tanks for scalding the pigs in. I had to order quite a bit of equipment for the harvesting class. I'll do a video on that and just go through with you guys what I ordered, why I ordered it, and what we're gonna use it for. And then after we do the class, I can give you more of an in-depth review on the items I bought and let you know if you need this, these items or what you could do without or downsize or whatever. That's good. That'll be a great video. I'll be doing that video shortly too because we had to get quite a bit of equipment. But it's gonna pay for itself because next year we can harvest the pigs ourselves we won't have to buy any equipment. So this year we're paying up front for the equipment and next year we'll be saving money. So it's kind of one of those things, it's an investment. That's what you gotta look at it as, it's an investment into your future, into your food security. Let's check on the compost and outhouse. We've been using this, it works great. There's no smell. People are telling me I got my toilet paper on backwards. This is the way I like to use it. We got our hooks when you gotta hang your jacket up or your hat up. You know when you go in the bathroom you get a little hot and sweaty every once in a while? That's where you hang your clothes when that happens. It's serious, it happens every once in a while. I don't want my guests to be uncomfortable. We gotta have a place for them to hang their equipment. We got the sink, we have running water, Woohoo! That's just awesome, that excites me. I can wash my hands in my composting outhouse. Yeah, if we lose power, I have a bathroom to use and I can wash my hands. I got running water. I don't have to run my well. I am excited. We need to figure out a way. This will be next spring, but we're going to be collecting rainwater off the outdoor kitchen. We'll have to put a gutter system on the outhouse too to fill this bucket with an overflow, of course. And then for the outdoor kitchen, I want to put pallet racks out back here with two IBC totes. And we'll have our gutters running off here and down and back to the pallet shelves. We'll have two IBC totes collecting our rainwater. We'll have them up high, we'll have pressure, and we'll have good running water into the outdoor kitchen. That's the plan there. It's getting too close to winter here in northern New Hampshire for us to worry about that. That'll be next year's project. One of the modern setters had a great suggestion. They said put some flat rocks in this area. We'll be doing that. Thank you for that suggestion. Hey, look, right here, we'll start with this one. We got one for now. Oh. We'll put what we have for now over there. We'll use that for now, we'll get some more. I know, you want to see the stars of the show. You want to see the pigs. Look how great and fast they're growing. They're doing amazing. They're eating all the apples. Look, all the apples we put out here, those seven bucket loads from our Kubota tractor, just about all gone. And then we've been putting more and more out here throughout the time. And they're doing a great job cleaning them up. They're not too fond of tomatoes. I think, would you rather have 
apples right now than tomatoes, huh? Those are some great heirloom tomatoes. Why aren't you eating them, huh? Yo, we're asking you. We want to know. Our automatic pig feeder is working awesome. I put three bags of grain in there the other day. Look at that. The pigs are going to show you how they love it. They have a constant supply to food, to grain. They always have a constant supply of apples and grass. Their automatic pig water is doing great too. Put a link to those videos right here. One of the best things that we've made for the pigs, it's so much easier to take care of them. I can dump three bags of grain in that feeder. That way I know they always have feed. I don't got to worry about it other than filling it up once a week. And they have a constant supply of water. I don't got to worry about them knocking over their water dish because pigs do that. You need to have something sturdy and secure that they can't knock over. And that 55 and the 55 gallon drum full of water works perfect with a pig nipple on it. I'm telling you, it's worth, the, it's worth the time investment to make all this equipment. It'll pay for itself over and over again, every year. What are you doing? Those are my pants. Look, how dirty you just got me. Those are for you to eat. You're fresh. You're fresh. Pigs are fun, cute animals, but they only have one thing on their mind, eating. If you stood still out there long enough, that's right, they would eat you. They're omnivores, and there's nothing wrong with that. But we need to keep that in perspective. They're animals. They're made to eat. That's all they think about. They don't think about us. They don't like us. They like me because I give them food. That's why they come running to me. They don't come running to me because they like me. They say, hey, this guy's got food. And if I stood there long enough, they'd eat me. So we got to remember that. And these guys, are, we're food to them, and they're our food too. I know it's not easy to take a life. I'm not going to enjoy harvesting these guys. But I will enjoy the great, healthy food they're going to provide for me and my family and our friends. I'd rather eat good, healthy food and have to... It's not, it's not sacrifice. It's living intentionally is hard. And I get that. I don't enjoy killing the animals or harvesting them, however you want to say that. But it, it's what we need. It's what, it's what it takes for us to get the healthy food that we want to have for our family. I couldn't afford to go to the store and buy this kind of meat or go to a local farmer. It can be pretty pricey. And if you can afford it, that's awesome. I enjoy raising our animals. I enjoy knowing where they came from. I enjoy being able to take our food scraps and feed it to our animals and turn it into meat and great manure for our gardens. To me, I just love seeing that whole continuous cycle that the creator made when he designed this world. To me, it's just a beautiful thing. and It connects me with God, and I love that. And I love seeing it, and that's one of the reasons why I enjoy raising the animals. We hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, make sure you give it a thumbs up, share it. It's really helping the channel grow, and we wanna thank all the modern steaders for that. Thank you. The chicken tractor that me and Olivia are going to be building in Sunday's video is going to be epic. It's going to be a game changer for sure. Don't forget to come back and watch Sunday's video. It's going to be great. And then leave it in the comments down below on Sunday's video and let me know what you think. If you haven't already subscribed to the channel, hit the subscribe button now. And while you're there, hit the little bell icon and that'll turn on notifications and let you know every time we upload new videos and when we go live. We'll be doing more live shows as winter comes. And we'll see you right back here at Lumna Acres, a guide to modern homesteading, self-sufficiency, and freedom. Bye.